Hi guys, um, I just decided to do a video, I'm about to light my log burner um, and I've decided to do a video about some things that I've done to it to uh, improve it. Um, this is a very old log burner that I salvaged from somebody's house. Um, it's got a back, an old back boiler in it. Um, unfortunately the back boiler had split so that wasn't usable. Um, so I've done some adaptions to the log burner itself to to get what's called um, reburn or sometimes it's called um, gasification um, it's where the unburnt fumes that are going up the, the flue um, get wasted so um, with, with a reburner or gasification you um, slow down the gases escaping and um, you manage to burn off the excess that would normally be getting wasted up the flue um, so I've done some ad, ad, ad adaptations to the or alterations to the log burner to uh, uh, make this happen. So um, I'm going to show you the log burner and talk you through some of the things that have been done to it. Um, I hope you like the video. Cheers. Bye. So this is the log burner. I'm just about to light it. Um, I think it's a, a 1960s or 70s, what's called, a, I think it was a villager. Um, I've lost the paperwork for it, but I will find it and confirm those details later on. Um, originally I installed it and we was going to have uh, the back boiler, which is, it's got all the pipes down there uh, for 25mm um, pipes that go out the back. We're going to go to a... Um, a tank in the loft and run the heat hot water but um, when I found out the pipes the the inner radiator had split um, the plans changed uh, as you can see this log burner had been set out in somebody's garden for quite a while so um, this door here had been taken off and was inside the inside the log burner and the the rain had fallen down through the, the flue and rusted the um, the door inside, but I still managed to salvage it. Um, big cast iron log burner itself, um, some welded seams and bits and pieces. Um, this part wasn't here, um, I call it a baffle, but it's probably called something else. Um, this part wasn't here, so I've had, I made that myself. It's just a it stops all the ash, ash from falling out, but you can remove that. And you can also let, you, with the fact it's hinged on and hanging on the sides here, you can hold it back like that to get the air underneath the fire, get it going. Um, the actual log burner itself, the radiator itself is, the tanks are down the sides and they're actually built in, so it's completely welded. Um, there's a pocket here and a pocket here and it goes all the way around the back you can see uh, you can't really see sorry on the video but it's so there's two two walls um, and there's one at the back as well which goes it actually goes uh, up the back so from here it goes up the back and then comes forward at an angle so that the flames go up and around and heat the water um, and they would go round the pipes, but obviously no water's going in there. Um, so what I've done is, if you look at um, some videos or any information to do gasification, what happens is the, the 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 fumes that would be coming off the fire would be sucked straight up the flue, and they don't get time to ignite. So what you do is I, I've cheated by using the um, the pockets or the the uh, radiator that's built in um, I've made inlets for the air to get into that, that jacket so it draws air through here and it travels up the sides and that, that cold air gets heated up and then there's holes inside the fire here and at the back um, along there there's a series of holes um, 7 mil holes all the way along the back. What happens is the hot air then goes up um, 
and where I've, I've actually put a baffle plate at the top here, almost like a register plate, I suppose, at the top of the fire, um, slows the gases escaping. The hot air that's hot, fresh air that's coming in mixes with these gases and they burn um, and they burn really well. And therefore, the amount of wood that you use is a lot less than I was using before because so much of the the gases that were coming off the wood were going straight up the flue and being completely wasted. So, um, yeah, that's some of the things that I've done. What I'm going to try and do here is also on the, the doors, I wanna, I've done some new seals on it. I haven't done a great job, but I want to put new seals on and I'm going to try and get um, uh, an air wash system. So I'm going to put in front of these doors, these are little inlets, as you can see. So the air goes, what would happen is the air goes through here and goes up, goes up in front of the glass. Um, but when you want the fire to, to start, what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll get the fire started and push, push this plate back so that the air goes under the fire and that, that gets it roaring at first with the, with the door shut you have, it, have uh, I've got a metal bar that just holds that open for a little while once the fire's roaring uh, take the metal bar out and that closes but the air then goes in there and up but I need the distance between um, the back of the door here and this to be tighter so that the air gets pulled up the face of the glass um, and I'm going to try and somehow do the same at the top so the air gets pulled down this way it will stop the um, it will encourage the flames to lick the glass and that, that, that keeps them clean because on this system that I've got here it does tend to soot up quite a bit I've just cleaned the glass um, I'll show you how I do that another time then there's the old um, wet paper and a bit of the charcoal from the bottom of the uh, fire is used to clean the glass, which is quite good. But yeah, since I've done this, I've, I use a lot less wood um, in the fire, um, and it's 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 really good if you can do it. I mean, on, on a lot of the system, a lot of the fires that are out there, they don't have back boilers like this one, but it's it's very good. Um, at the top there, I've got a big register plate and. Um, a big, um, I don't know what you call this now. <laughs> Just my memory's gone. Um, anyway, I've got a big flappy thing. I'm going to call it a flappy thing. That's the, that redirects the air. Sometimes, um, just a little turn on that. Cause you, if you've got fire all on one side of the, um, the log burner, you can redirect the air a little bit and it changes things. Or you can slow down You know everything, which is really good. Um, the other thing that's been done to the log burner is the, these were really rattly when I first got it and the flaps themselves and they let even when they were closed they let in loads of air and the fire didn't die down or you didn't have any control so I took these out and I've put they do a fireproof ribbon which is used for um, obviously sit, uh, wrapping around the edge of the glass when you change the glass I've actually managed to pack it in around these little doors and I put new handles on so now when you close it, the fire pretty much dies out um, uh, immediately. Obviously, I need to come up with a way of making these down here completely draft sealed. This is just a rough fix, really, for the minute, for controlling the inlet on the, on the outside. What I'll do is I'll, I'm going to get the fire going in a second. Um, I've found that this is the best way to get the fire going. Uh, I make a little stack of all my off cuts um, like that, fill it through the newspaper and light it. Pretty simple. Um, so I'll give it a go now. And see how. can hear that wind whisk and um, pulling up the flu already. So what I'll do is I'll show you a little video in a little while of the 
jets of gas um, mixing at the top of the flue um, where they'll be coming through the jets so hopefully you'll see how well this draws obviously I've I've got the um, a divert of flappy panel thing um, going straight up at the moment this this is a really good idea if you can get hold of one of these um, this is an, a model called an eco fan um, absolutely brilliant works off of purely just the the heat from the fire comes up through here um, and this bit of technology in here this I forget what you call it um, it takes the heat that's coming in one side and the cool from the other and it turned, um, transforms it into electricity, runs this little motor and that fan will blow air up to, uh, I think it's something six, like six metres away apparently it can blow it, blow the air um, but we use it just to get the, the air across the house and up that, up into the upstairs rooms which really, when you come down the stairs you can really feel it and just give you a little bit of a better view of let me see, it's Christmas, this is my son. Say hello, Hayden. Hi. <laughs> He's busy watching YouTube. Um, so, this is our house, but it's a bit overkill the size of the, the, the log burner. I think the paperwork originally said it was a nine kilowatt um, log burner, but presumably with it being nine kilowatts and completely surrounded in water, um, now there's no water in it to keep it somewhat cooler. I'm presuming that this is a much higher, higher kilowatt now. Um, also, th th there is something else. It, uh, if you look inside here, you can see the holes at the back that have been drilled. I'm going to I'm going to put some down the sides as well. Um, you can also see that up there, above the fire, I've put some steel beams. Um, they're like channel. I've put them at the top there, and that helps slow the the fire down, and it stops the gases escaping too quickly. They get a chance to mix with all that cold air that's coming in, and they burn a lot better. See, I haven't had to mess around with the fire. That's pretty quick. That's caught cool light. No problem whatsoever. So what I now, what I usually do now. Obviously, try not to set fire to the front room with bits and pieces popping. I'll load up some logs around the sides. I've got a couple of damp ones here, but I'm sure they'll be alright. Uh, the, in the internal size of the fire is um, 650 from left to right, and from front to back, it's roughly 350. So, I can get some fairly good sized logs in here. without messing around. I usually just fill it up a bit. I'll put some of the damp ones around the outside, they'll dry out in a bit. Right, and then Close the doors up. I'm going to order some new glass in, in the new year when I've got some more pennies in the bank. So, if I open that, right, you can see pretty much very quickly the flames will die down when I close them because there's no air getting in. If I open them, you see immediately that that starts to go, and hopefully, you'll see the difference. I'll push that um, bit back at the, at the back there. You should see the, the air rushes straight up, and you get a really good burn. It's a, it's a, it's a, I only do this because I mean that just looks stupid. Um, I only do that for a little while just to get the fire roaring, um, and then once that's done, I'll take that crowbar away and the fire's doing its own thing then. Once that's done, 
I'll give it a go now, but what I'll do, I thought the wood's burning pretty well at the moment anyway, so what I'll do is I'll open these. I've got to come up with a better way of closing these off. Bit of a makeshift right now. So now the air's getting the air's getting drawn in through here in a in a minute once I close these gaps. The air will get pulled in through the back. And hopefully in a minute you'll see. Uh, the fire's not going for, uh, hot enough completely yet. Um, what you'll see is you'll see loads of jets coming out the back. I'll do another video in a minute and add it, add it to the end of this. But you can see now what's going on. I'll leave that. Close those off. Let, let the, the fire build up and I'll do another video showing you the jets. Um, and I might clean up all the mess I've just made. Hope you like the video, guys. Um, pretty new to YouTube. Um, yeah, hope you like the video. Please subscribe. I'm going to do a load more videos of other bits and pieces that I do with the log burner. Um, also, some other bits and pieces that I've done around the house. Most of them are not finished because I'm, I'm a builder by trade. Comes with the territory, unfortunately. Thanks, guys.